I'm Chip Foos, and you're watching Motor Cult TV. Hey, this is Joan Giantolano, and we're here at the Route 66 Rendezvous with Andrea Winter, the Director of Communications. How are you doing, Andrea? I'm doing great. Thanks for having us out here. It's a pleasure to be able to talk to you. We're really excited to be here. It's the 18th annual Stater Brothers Route 66, and it's basically, I, I, I found out that it started with what is it 400 cars it started with 200 cars it was a one and a half day car show actually at Glen Helen Pavilion which is now the Hyundai Pavilion mm -hmm. and yeah it's just grown exponentially and now it's a um, four day three night show we have um, close to 2,000 vehicles pre-1974 that cruise a 35 block area and it's just a great show So congratulations on being in, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, I feel very honored, believe me. Very, it's very cool. It's a very, it's an honor for us to talk to you, and then also we're going to talk to your son in a bit. But since we have you here with us, um, we know that Chip started at a really young age working for you um, in modifying cars and designing cars. Can you talk about a little about your company and how you started out in modifying and detailing cars and where it's taken you? Well, it was a love of mine and uh, always wanted to have a trick car, so therefore I made my hobby my trade. And then after I was married and Chip came along, and Chip was seven years old, I was dragging him to the shop. And I taught him everything I knew. And uh, he took to it like a duck to water. He just, he enjoyed it, he loved it. And when it comes from your heart, it's not a job, it's fun. It, it almost seems like he was, he came out of the womb, like wanting to design cars, maybe from your influence, possibly. I think it was because you know, I'd finish a car and he loved to ride in it and he's, it was just his thing. I mean, it was a natural, you know. Very cool. So let's talk about you for a second. What was the first car that you really got into and, and modified and, and, and designed or detailed yourself? Well, I worked all summer. My folks knew a gentleman that owned a body shop and I worked all summer with him, saved every nickel I had. And I went to Los Angeles, and we went to all different places. Finally found an old beat-up 42 two-door sedan. I think I paid all of like 200 bucks for it. But that was a lot of money back then, it was just after the war. How old were you? Let's see, I was probably 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Was this your first car? This was my very first car. And uh, I built, built it and made it look like a 48 because that was better than a 42 and today it's reversed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to make their cars retro as they right. say. Right? Make it look newer instead of older. <laughs> but uh, it came out fairly decent and that was my start. And then I, naturally I got coupes after that because I could afford what I wanted then. Very cool, very cool. So that brought you, that was the inspiration, I guess you could say, for for your passion. And so what made you, what is it about cars that really took your passion to the next level? Like what, what is it about like working on cars that really, really gets you excited? The creating part of it, uh, trying to come up with something that's different, cool, trick. And uh, just putting the package together and the colors, interior, you know, the car should be a, a unit, not just this a good looking taillight. That, that taillight's got to go with the front end as well. I mean, it's got to be a combined unit. I'm lost for words here for some reason or other. But it uh, should be a rolling piece of art. 
you know, and that's what it's all about. Very cool. So um, here at Motor Cult TV, not only do we talk about the cars, but we also talk about car culture and the people in their cars. Uh, what do you, as far as like, what is your involvement or like, what are your experiences with car culture and, and people and groups in their cars? Well, things will change. Uh, like, cars are staying more stock than they did, say, a few years back because they're getting so old that people don't want to mess them up. They want the original more look, except maybe spiff them up with nicer interior wheels and better running gear and etc. I don't think you're seeing as much customizing done as there were in the older days, you know, like when I first started. But uh, there's room for everything, you know, that's what makes it neat. There's, there's, there's no book on what you're supposed to do. You do what you feel like doing. Right, that's how you bring your creativity right, exactly. into the car. So, okay, so one last question before we go. So, okay, here today in 2007, after all your experience, do you have a car that you're working on that you have, like your pet project right now? Well, I was working on a 51 Jaguar. It was a four-door sedan, Mark V, I believe it was. And turned it into a two-door sedan, wedge sectioned it, chopped it, and uh, it was it was going to be rather unique, but the owner and I didn't get along. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Difference in creative vision, yeah? So, he was a little more anal than I wanted to be, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of broke my heart to quit on it, but yeah, you got to do what you got to do. So, what is your dream car that you'd like to work on? You know, I really don't have a dream car. It's just, it's whatever blows your skirt up, shall I say. You know, like some, some days I'd like to do this, another day I'd like to do that. You know, it's just, it's just, I like all cars. And I don't have a particular car that I'm really totally in love with. Awesome. Very, very cool. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. I think see you're... my son's in the room. Yeah, I think we're going to talk to him next. Much better speaker than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you did awesome. Thanks for watching Motor Cult TV.